welcome to the Cactus Quest channel. Today I'm hanging out with my man Peter and we're going to be sharing some tips and tricks about how you can take care of your cactus and succulents without killing these things. So without further ado, let's hop on into it. I'm Peter Walkowiak. I'm owner of PW Plants. This is a wholesale nursery. Um, I sell retail online, but I'm primarily wholesale. Um, I've been doing it for 20 years. I've been, I have a degree in horticulture um, and pretty much have been in the nursery business my whole life. So I got into succulents 40 years ago and it, as you can see, it went crazy. People, you're very well known for your adeniums and your medusa hybrids. What are some things that you, that you actually, that you love to do that maybe you're not as well known for? Um, I do, I'm working on Pacopodiums right now. Um, I'm expanding my euphorbia uh, into other types of euphorbias. Um, I just planted a couple hundred flats of different things down below. Beautiful. Uh, so I, I'm expanding my inventory. I just moved here two and a half years ago, so it's been a lot of work getting up, up and running again. So that I'm so finally there. And so we're in uh, your, I guess what I, in my mind is your main greenhouse. I call this one my conservatory because it, it's basically nothing that's here for sales, either um, stock plants, stuff I plan to grow up as specimen plants or as part of my own collection, which is where I get all my seed and so forth, my propagation material from. Gotcha. And then your other greenhouses is where you have my production greenhouse gotcha and I plan on having a third greenhouse which will be my specimen house where I'll start growing more specimens for for resale so people don't have to wait for years to get them up to size and already be there okay. and I can do it faster than people at home can do it right well how did you initially get into all this what was the what's your origins what's the origin story of, of uh, Peter W uh, well my, my first exposure to succulents that really got me started was a friend of mine in college had a uh, Bombax ellipticum and I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. So uh, I asked him, you know, hey, where'd you get this? So he brought me to this nursery up in the San Fernando Valley and that's where I purchased some of my prize plants that I have now. My Adenia glauca, Adenia bomeanum, Swazicum, um, and some other plants that I have that's, that are 40 years old, that's where they came from. Gotcha. My La Fafer, for instance, is about 40 years old. Gotcha. So you've been, you've been professionally growing and selling plants for 20 years, but you've been collecting plants for much longer. Yes. I, I, was, I started collecting in my college years. Um, um, I had a hiatus of about 15 years while my kids were growing up. Right. Um, I called my my dark ages, my plant dark ages. Sure. And everything that survived, uh, my glauca back there and the other euphorbia you can see right there, it's all in that 40 year old range. Right. And um, that's the stuff that survived. You know, my dog on potting it and all that other fun stuff. You know, for 15 years, I managed to keep them alive. Once the kids were old enough, I started buying plants again. I found the, the, <laughs> the clubs. Sure. And then I started propagating, and then that's where the nursery right is from. Somebody that follows you on Instagram wants to buy a plant from you, but isn't a wholesale person. How would they go about? They would go to my Instagram okay. page, PW Plants, and then they would they they could order something there or ask me do I have something and then I can reply and give them the heads up. One of the questions that I get asked all the time is about um, you know how do you care for areocarpus or how do you care for an adenium or how do you care for this like how do you what kind of soil should I use? You I imagine in the past 40 years you have made some mistakes? Oh yeah I, I made plenty of mistakes. What I find is most useful is knowing where the plants come from so you know what kind of conditions they grow under. And that gives you a good clue as to how much sun they will take, how much shade they, they might need. Um, this is all learning stuff. I've cooked many of plants because I had them too much sun. Um, well, one, of the, one of the key things I found is, is whenever you transplant succulents, make sure that you water them before you transplant them. I use moist soil when I transplant, and I do not water afterwards. Um, uh, you've probably experienced this yourself. Um, if you've ever transplanted something and you watered it, and it's about two, three weeks later, it dies on you. 
That's what happens. That's why. It doesn't happen the next day. Uh, and so you, it takes a little while of figuring out the connection because uh, because it's not the next day. So it's hard to tie the, the two events together. But when it happens consistently over and over again, you see the same thing happen. You sort of get clued into it. So do not water your second ones after you transplant them. And, and do you know what causes that to happen? They just go into shock? or Well, it's not shock. It's you you damage the roots whenever mm-hmm. you transplant, no matter how careful you are. Right. And any root hairs, all that kind of stuff is damaged. And if you don't allow it to callus off um, before you water it the next time, you know, heal, right. you know, and, you know, take care of itself, it will rot. Right. Right. You know, fungus or bacteria will find that spot and will make that connection if you water it. If you do not water it and the soil is just moist, that promotes healing and root regeneration. Okay. Dry soil does not do that. Gotcha. That's why I don't use dry soil because it desiccates your roots. So I'd never try and also it falls through the holes. If you're trying to drill a hole, plant seedlings, if it's dry soil, it all falls back in. Wet so- moist soil stays a hole. And I can drop the roots in there and I can push the soil in, in around it. You know, there's a common misconception that, oh, well, a cactus, it's a drought tolerant plant. They grow in the desert, so they don't need a lot of water. Yeah. I killed a lot of cactus initially by underwatering them because I would always give them a light sprinkle. I mean, literally a, a very light sprinkle thinking, well, they just need a little bit of water. That's fine. Never thinking about like what you mentioned. Well, in habitat, how do they get water? Well, they get water from rains. In a lot of places in the it's desert, when it saturate. rains, it, it ra- pours. It pours saturation. So, one of the, like, I know for me, you're, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in the video, is underwatering things. So just sprinkling a little bit. And really, in, in the growing season, what I realize is that you really want to, you want to water those things until water is flowing out of the bottom I, of the pot. I, I only spritz in the wintertime on the summer growers and I spritz the winter growers in the summertime, but I never not water. Gotcha. Uh, and so you, and so when you are spritzing in the winter time, you were doing that, because uh, it is not, it's not a weekly thing that you're doing. It's not on a time schedule. That is much more of kind of an intuitive. Weather. So it's a weather event. Um, if I've had sunny weather and I having continuing sunny weather, I can do a spritzing without any worry. And I, during the winter months, I like to do it early in the day so all extra moisture will evaporate. Right. And I, when I water in the summertime, I like to water late in the day because then that moisture stays on a plant all night and they have maximal chance to get all, all they can before the next day. Okay. Um, so when you water, thoroughly water your plant, you're at 100%. Um, when you hit 20%, that's between 10 and 20% is where you want to water. Okay. That's when the soil visually appears dry, but is not fully dry. So you, just to clarify, so 100% up here, this is when your water is when, fully when you, saturated. When you've watered it to its full capacity. And then as it slowly dries, when you hit 20%, and I always look at the bottom of the pot whenever I'm uh, not sure if it needs to be watered. Right. Um, and the soil should be appear in a light color. And at 20%, it will appear a light color. And that's what you're looking for. When you look at the bottom of the pot or you feel it, the, your drain holes, you want to make sure that there's no moisture there gotcha. before you water it. Um, that's one of those mistakes most people make is, you, oh, you feel the surface, so they take their little probes and they go in three inches or so, not to the bottom of the pot. Right. Oh, let's dry. It's not dry enough. Okay. So I always check the bottom of the pot um, and I hit, you don't want to go past 10%. At 10% dry uh, capacity, uh, weed wilt. Okay. That, that shows you that last 10% is not usable. Okay. Um, and that's when you get started getting dusty dry and you don't want to go there. So, so the watering range is between 10 and 20%. Okay. That, that's where you want to water. Um, if I want to spritz, I will only get maybe 30 or 40% capacity. I don't go 100% when okay. I spritz. So you don't want to go all the way up to 100% on something that's dormant okay. ever. ever. Okay. So uh, is it, so because it's one of the misconceptions I hear all the time is like people will say, well, you don't want to water, you don't want to water your plants in the winter time at all. Cactus, you never want to water them in the winter, but that's, that's wrong. not necessarily true. That is wrong because what you'll, what what will happen is when you start to water in springtime, all those roots have desiccated right. because it's too dry. 
and what will happen is you will have rot. And this has happened to me because I, in the beginning, 15, 20 years ago, this is what I was doing too. Right. And I found, no, you have to give them some water during the winter months. Again, you want to maintain them. And when they're dormant, you want to maintain, uh, maintain between 10 and about 30%, somewhere in that range. You don't want to go above 40 or 50%. You really, gotcha. you, they really don't want to. So then, like, so just a light, so you, somebody could use, like, a light sprayer, one of those little, like, they sell at Home Depot, a little HDX sprayer. I, I, could, give, I could give an example. Okay. I'll show you what a spritz is. I'll, I'll do it on the Focus here because they, they won't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's on. You're going to kind of give us an example of what, what when you're spritzing. talking about doing a spritz Correct. versus a full-fledged watering. Right. So I'll just turn the water on. So it'll be just about like that. Okay. So that's a de I mean, it's a decent amount of water, but you're not, you're just not soaking them. I'm not going to get total saturation because that's will lead to complications and problems, especially if the weather changes and it stays cloudy and so forth, and you know, for a week or so at a time that plant will stay soaking wet. Gotcha. So I always, I want to do it during sunny weather. Um, I can do it on these because I would actually soak these this time of year, any time of year. Okay, gotcha. So I can spritz these right now and not be uh, concerned about it. That's why I didn't do the adeniums. Okay. I would not do the adeniums today. Right. It's, we're having cloudy day today, storm tomorrow. I don't know how Tuesday is going to be as far as sun. It will probably be partly cloudy, so it won't get that warm. Mm -hmm. Tap water, for instance, is usually higher, is usually alkaline. Okay. Um, so it's usually up around eight pH, yeah. which is no good for your plants. Yeah, that's where mine is. Yeah, uh, so, so, and that's that's where mine in Escondido was. Here, I'm just above seven here, so I'm not quite as bad here in, in Ramona. Right. But I still acidify my water, I use vinegar. Um, you wanna run your pH around six to six and a half in that range. That keeps your all your soluble salts solu soluble, so they, they, it doesn't build up in your soil, because um, that's where things can go b bad on you if you don't do that. Okay. Um, what happens? You soil has a what's called a buffering capacity. It's able to take that alkalinity and neutralize it, but eventually th that ability gets worn out, right. and that's when you start seeing your plants turning yellow. Uh, yes, have that big salt buildup around the top. About, yeah. You're not adjusting the pH. That's what happens when you're using tap water. Okay. And then that soil is shot. It needs to be replaced because its its capacity to, to buffer is gone. Right. Um, uh, th if you want your soil to last forever, uh, you want to keep your pH in that that in that range. And you basically your soil stays healthy for 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 a very very long t period of time. Okay. And with having 2,000 plants, I don't want to have to transplant everything every year. I would never get anywhere. Yeah, I don't blame you. So, I mean, I, I, yeah. and, and if you, you, know, you look around, you'll see this is way too much to transplant every year or every couple of years. I just transplant it as it gets too big. I don't worry about taking, um, I, I will make a caveat. Whenever I buy new plants, yes. I strip the old soil off because a lot of these growers use peat moss in their mix and other things, and that's horrible. And I found that if I left them on there, I was having two or three years later, I was having plants that just rot out on me. Right. And I couldn't figure out why until about the 12th, 14th one. And I was like, I see this commonality. It's always right at the soil level where they rot. Right. And, and I see that peat moss soil mix is all mucked. Yeah, what and I it's have, like, and, it's, and that's what the problem was. What I've noticed, and I found a few of them this year, transplanting older plants that I bought from Home Depot or wherever. Right. And and you'd pull it out, and I laughed actually a few of them. They're like in a cork. Right. They haven't. I didn't. You know, that this is from years ago. So when I would initially transplant things, I would basically I would put the whole thing into a pot and then fill in the space around the original soil. Peat moss. But they don't grow out. It literally becomes like a wine cork. Right. Uh, it doesn't really absorb water, and roots, roots don't never grow, grow out, out of it. They never so, grow out yeah, of it. Yeah, that's the one thing that I, I I've Peat killed a few plants that way. Peat I put moss. things in the ground in that soil and watch them literally just over a couple of months just shrivel away. Yeah. You know. So, so can you show me a couple of your favorite plants? Yeah. What are what would you say are like your favorite favorites? This is the one. This guy here. And this is the uh, Lafaufer Williams guy. And you've had this one for quite some time, huh? 
Uh, about 81, 82. So yeah, almost 40 years. So he's a little older than I am. I, I popped on the scene in 85. Yeah, he is older than you. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. So what are some other favorites? I, I love my Mammalaria uh, Pringly Eye variety Longus a wonderful plant. Where does this grow normally in habitat? Where Mexico. Would... I love the fact that the old spines turn almost black. Yeah. And then when it has little purple flowers on there, it's really cool. Um, Daisy Cantha is a, another cool one I love. This guy right here? Yep. That has big, huge flowers. And you're well known uh, in the cactus and succulent community for your staging and for sh for your show plants. Yes. What are some of the things that you found to be the most uh, important when you're staging a plant? What is it? What are you What are you going for exactly? Uh, a balance between yeah. and a, a relationship between the pot and the plant. Yeah, you, know, you, you this you can't have a con you know it has to work together. Right. So they don't always. So a lot of times it takes a, lot, a little bit of work to figure out what pot that I have that work best with a plant. Sure. And then that, one of my other favorites is this area, area Carpus retusus there. And that one I got about 20 years ago as a single head. Yeah, that is incredible. And so this is a perfect example of staging. staging. Beautiful. And it actually needs to be moved to a larger pot now. So a couple of my older plants I grew this from seed. This is probably 35 years. Now, is this, this is Tordirama or? Uh, Bumama. Bumama. And I believe this one is crossed with Grandicornis. A euphorbia. Another euphorbia. Yeah, and that was from seed. It's amazing. It was just popped up as a little seedling in another pot. And I said, oh, that's interesting. And I separated it and grew it and, you know, and if you Google Odinia glauca, you will see this plant. You actually could, if you if you go look at one of my earlier videos, you can see uh, a little bit a little bit more footage of this guy when he's uh, all leafed out. A little, yeah, a little 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 greener, a little leafier. This is my the bumama that broke the pot. I mean the bomianum that broke the pot. Right. So this is what it, you were talking it, about it, earlier. Yeah, where... and you can see how the soil has pushed out over the edge of the pot. That's that expansion of the soil after it broke the pot. Now, now I can water it, the water runs right into the soil. It doesn't <laughs> run over the edge. No problem, huh? No, I was having trouble just before this happened because I would have to go really slow with the water. It's like, I don't like this. I knew something was gonna happen and it did. Yeah, I would say out of all the adeniums, I think the swazicum is my, I really like the thin, you can't see it right now, but the, the yeah. thinner, more narrow leaves. And uh, you can see some on here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I got one of those actually from you last time I was here. Yeah, and you can see it's also in fruit. So I'll have seeds as well. These are the fruits. So these are your, your greenhouses where you've got most of your stuff. Yeah, this is all my outdoor growing area and my production greenhouse. And the greenhouse is mainly so I can keep things in the wintertime and I can keep on working. Right. Yeah, so, some things don't want to be wet. Yeah, th these are all the seed flats I have to transplant here in the next few months. And right now, this is my priority is these guys because they're starting to bust the flats because they're pushing sideways. Gotcha, okay. That's so, when you know it's time. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it was time, but I didn't have, I had some other ones that were worse. Gotcha. So, so, so I'm getting caught up. So this is, so all the stuff in here, this is all of your plants that you have available for sale to fulfill to your right. wholesale uh, clientele. And here is a good example of I just transplanted some monodiniums. Okay. I still have, they've been transplanted for a week now. Still have not still watered have them. Water. Now, monodenium, this is the one that you have hanging next to the Deuterconia. Right, this is the uh, uh, Guntheria variety monolary, which is a 
Guntherii with thinner stems, so it drapes better. Gotcha. It makes a better hanging basket. You know, I've come here many, many times, and uh, every time I hang out with you, I always think, man, I should have recorded that, because I w wish I could go back and re-listen to it. And today, for all the people at home, we finally done it. So I think we're done. Yeah. Anything else you want to add to it? There's always something else. So it's at Peter W. Plants. Correct. Go follow Peter on Instagram. Make sure you're following me on Instagram if you're not already doing that, at Cactus Quest. And uh, drop a comment down below. If you have any questions, go hit up Peter on Instagram. Bug him. Don't bug me. He's the professional. I'm just out here doing the, doing the research for everybody. He's the pro. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time.